back to the podcast. I am your host, Mr. Made Over. And I am Mrs. Made Over. And today we have two of the most yes. fire. <laughs> I'm talking fire. Like, like this is that one-two punch you never seen coming. But uh <laughs> <laughs> we have the host. Of the round table on Mrs. Sandy Powell. Don't worry, we're gonna get all that straight. And we also have daughter of the king herself, Janija. This girl right here is one powerful. I'm trying to tell you, look out. For this one yes, right here, yes, Janija, please introduce yourself. Um, my name is Janija. My Instagram is Daughter of the King. Um, no, it's actually underscore Slim dot M, but it's Daughter of the King. So, yeah. And we will post all that somewhere around around, around here. Yeah. So, <laughs> to get into this, I wanted to uh actually talk to uh Janija first to uh get to the point of. What made you say that I'm bold and I really don't care? Um, what made me say that is, um, I feel like realizing that it does not matter how hard you try to please people. It does not matter how hard you try. You will never please people because they're not the ones who you're meant to please anyways. It's mm-hmm. God. He's the one who we're supposed to be doing things for. It's him. And so once I got to that point, I'm like, doing things for people, even doing things only for my own satisfaction, it's not giving me, it's not fulfilling me. Mm. So, so yeah. So at what age did you say, you know, I'm fed up of <clears throat> doing things of the flesh, pleasing myself and pleasing others and pleasing right. others? What made you say like, listen, that um, mind made up type mentality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I was um I think I was nineteen. I think I was nineteen. Yeah, I was nineteen when I made that decision. Um and then when I turned twenty was when I really just went full on ahead and I just I just gave up my life my my life to Christ and I was like, Yeah, I just wanna follow Jesus now. Because nothing else is, nothing else is, it's just not, it's just not fulfilling anymore. Mm. Like, it has to be something else. Um, there has to be something deeper. Like, there has to be something more to life than just what what I'm doing. So. Right. Amen. Yeah. That's awesome. That's great to hear. She, she barely, she barely 19. You look barely 19. I, she, she, I just turned 20. She just had a deuce, deuce birthday. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what that yesterday. <laughs> she said yesterday. That's what I said. She said yesterday. <laughs> Work me your favorite down the road. <laughs> and, 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 and Sandy, uh, that sounds so crazy. That sounds real crazy That's saying crazy. that. But I'm gonna do it anyway, just to be <laughs> professional. Uh, <laughs> hey, Miss Sandy, Miss Sandy. Okay. But for you to hear at such a young age, a young person at this age, um, what does that do for you to know? I mean, especially knowing that the way the world is now, right. to find a diamond in this rough world right about now. Like, what sense of hope or what's the sense of thing does that give you well uh i see a mirror really Mm. i see myself (laughs) in her uh when i you know i also too am a teen christian uh uh started this race running at a young age and i'm not gonna act like it was just like a cakewalk i stumbled (laughs) and fell i got a few knots i've had probably (laughs) brain surgery (laughs) so i'm not gonna act like it's been just like oh you know uh, a cakewalk i've learned some hard lessons from being a young christian from the start Mm -hmm. but um i'm always thankful to see 
the next rise. Mm. And this is what uh, probably I didn't understand in my youth, but I mm-hmm. understand it now in mm. my old age, Maurice. Wow. <laughs> See, <Season. laughs> is that we're never catching God off guard. Mm. The world and whatever's happening in the world, we're not catching God off guard. He got it planned out from the onset. Right. He yeah. knew he was going to have me ready, set to go. He knew Jay was going to be ready, set to go at her time. There's going to be, it's just like a, 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 a an army on the mm. march. Mm. You know, no soldier runs forever. Right. 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 So there's always going to be another soldier that rises up. See, Jay, you know, I. I, I'm considered the old lady now. I'm about sixty years old See, almost. Season. And so, you know, I'm not gonna you know, I'm not gonna run forever. Right. But we need a woman of God. Jay, here she comes. Right. She's ready. Yeah. There's now this is why it's important for me, I feel like to put my hands on young women like her. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because I'm not gonna run forever. And it what is in me, God placed in me, I need to be imparting. I need to be telling, testifying, uh, uh, sharing so that you know the pitfalls, so you know the ups, the downs, mm-hmm. you know the tools to yeah. carry them, yeah. to take the ball, the one, the, the, where to step to the left or step to the right to keep them falling in a, in a, in a trap the enemy has, imparting wisdom because I'm not going to run this thing forever. Right. But God is always, we're nev- the enemy is never catching God off, uh, getting God off guard. True facts. Yeah. He's always raising up the next that's why you know when people try to make a big deal and I'm not there's no kick to the millennial. I never kick to the millennials. I love y'all, but I love y'all like I love the baby boomers. Y'all not special, y'all just next. <laughs> yeah, just, just next in y'all line. That's it. Yeah. It's, turn. it's time for you to take your rightful place and now run with the fervence that God had placed in the baby boomers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's no from generation to generation. Every generation we have to pass the torch. Right. Running for the Lord, and uh, so to me, you know, I, I'm I'm encouraged to see it, but I'm also delighted to be a part of mm. Jack and yeah. Tiffany, and you know all the other young women that come in my path and sons. Hey, you know, <laughs> season mom, season. So um, Miss Sandy, can you? I know you said that you were also a teen Christian. Can you give us just a a snapshot of how you got to the point to give your life to Christ as a yeah. teenager as well? Uh, it, well, it goes a little bit back to my story uh, about well, where where is Katie Jones? Mm-hmm. Katie Jones is my grandmother. She introduced God to us. Uh, but like Jay, also you, I got fed up. I got tired. My, my spirit was weary. Oh. I knew it was more. Like you said, when she said I knew it was more, that's why I chuckled. <laughs> <laughs> and then when they introduced me to the church, with, with well, you know, sometimes it's foolishness. And I said, God, you, because the person that introduced me to, you know, was trying to tell me, you know, that God is overly concerned with how I wear my hair. And I looked at God and said, you got to be more than this. <laughs> um, yeah. And so that it caused a hunger in me. And I'm sure that's Jake mm-hmm. can probably relate to this. Once you taste of the Lord, you just, you know, it's more. Yeah. You know, it's, it's got to be more to this thing. And you run after it, right, Jay? Yeah. So, Jay, <laughs> speak to um, who did, did somebody bring you? Or was it just an experience for you? Like somebody day? did someone introduce you to Christ. Yeah. And how did how did that process start up to you giving your life over? Um, okay, so I was raised in a Christian home. Um, so my family, they're Christian. So I went to church when I was younger. My grandma, she had us in church. Um, and when she passed away, that kind of stopped. Like we didn't really go as frequently. Mm. And me being a kid, you know, I didn't want to go to church. So, like I didn't want to go. But I just <laughs> remember when I was, um, I got baptized at maybe five, I think five yeah. or six around that age. And I remember it. I remember I was so proud. Like I was so proud to have gotten baptized. I feel like I had did something like this, you know, this big great thing. And through the years, um, like I said, like I, I didn't really go to church like that. But I still pray, like I still have faith, like I've always been praying since I was little and I had faith, but at the same time, I also was still lost. Like I didn't, 
I didn't fully understand. I didn't fully want to give my life to him. And um, in high school, I dealt with a lot of anxiety, like social anxiety. Mm. And I was really insecure. And I just did not have any confidence in myself. And um, and so, like I said, I still prayed, but I still did what I want at the same time. So I wasn't really fully repenting yet. And I remember um, uh, towards the towards the um, time that I actually got born again, I actually was dealing with really bad anxiety that I had been dealing with for like years. And I, I was it had gotten to like a breaking point. Where I was just like, I'm t- like, I'm really tired of this, like something has to something has to break mm-hmm. like something has to happen and um i remember that night i was having just a really just like bad paranoia and just anxiety and i know it was the enemy and i remember i went as i went to sleep i just started speaking um bible verses to myself i didn't even really know it i just started speaking whatever i could remember and something broke wow. something broke that night because i remember waking up that next morning and the next couple of days it was just different like i felt different like i looked at things differently it was just like I had gotten um, born again. Like God had washed my conscience. Like I didn't have any anxiety. It was like I got delivered, like mm-hmm. like that. Um, and also before that, I didn't mention it, but before that, um, I uh, I don't know if you guys know what the occult is or what, what the New Age movement is. Um, but basically, it's it's this thing where they believe that they're their own gods and stuff like that. And I actually got caught up into that, like in high school, after high school. And that actually was a turning point in my life because it was through that that God showed me that, you know, the spirit realm is real. And oh, yeah. but, I'm, but I'm the one who created it. Like, I'm, it's me, you know, like I'm the one who created this. You need to come, you know, come on the right side. And then it was through that that really fully led me to seeking him and seeking the truth. So, so, yeah. That's that, awesome. That's awesome. Wow. Um, I think that's a, a, an old adage, an uh, old uh, enemy's trick is is the same. It's the same thing. It's always about uh, exalting oneself. Mm. Every generation goes through that, you know, from the beginning of time with the enemy. You know, he's going to exalt himself. Mm-hmm. And he always tries to raise out a spirit, raise up a spirit of pride yeah. within mankind. Yeah. to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. Mm-hmm. And that is what gets us in trouble. That's what's wrong with us right now. In, in the U.S. of A., at this very moment, trying to because tell you. we won't subject ourselves to the Spirit of the Lord. Everybody wants to be great. Everybody mm-hmm. wants to be more than what God mm-hmm. has declared them to be. I don't know why we have a problem with just being a child of God. That's right. That's <laughs> it. Child of the Creator, right? What is wrong with right. That? right. But that's not enough. Just like it wasn't for the enemy, it wasn't enough. I want to be like Adam and Eve. I want to be like the Most High. Mm-hmm. Why don't you just be good with just being God's love, beloved? He, mm. yeah, Lord, you, what, what's right. wrong with like. being? Loved, you know, it, I, I'm good, I'm good right there. Right so, there. <laughs> the enemy has for us or for the people is that, and and like you said, this new it's not a new age. I hate to tell you, it's the same old, same, 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 same old. trick, different year. Pack is different <laughs> now. Yeah, and then, and they might be wearing you know, head up. Tie and fringes and all kinds of stuff, and they and every and every group that is doing it's not just one group; it's many, many groups. groups. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and it's all in any one man interpretation of what they want to convince the enemy's uh, words that they are more than what they should be. But yes, that's a good way to to have your ears wide open is to let God tell you who you are. Mm-hmm. And the crazy part, you said something earlier, uh, Janijah, that um, I always talk about this thing that we're living in. At first, we all think it's physical, but I always say it's 95 percent spiritual. spiritual. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and to under to get that understanding mm-hmm. to me is where it clicked for me. Because we fight, I mean, if it's physical, we fight in a losing battle. Yeah. And I always say, like, this spiritual thing, like when I say this spiritual thing, it's deeper than what people think it is. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think people play around with it a lot. They, you know, feel like they can come and go. Right. But then when they go, 
all of a sudden something that happened and never come back. Right. And that's always my thing. I always say like, man, like when people like, you know, like sin and and, and go back but never come back. Mm -hmm. Like for me, I'm like, I feel like if I do, what's the chances of that I am coming back? Yeah. What's the chances I'll make it back on this side? Like mm -hmm. the 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 opportunity to teeter totter and, and do this, you know, hopscotch, double dutch, whatever <laughs> it is that you do. But <laughs> it's just one of those things that I refuse to play Russian roulette with my spirit and with my soul like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I mean, we, I yeah. mean, we do it. We do it. So it's it's almost like we feel as if we must do it to prove a point. And that's to to be able to see someone, I'll say younger than me, because I remember being 19, 20, 21, 22. Like, I remember that age. And I remember not really seeking, not really trying to see, knowing, but not really trying to be on that end. And um, I'll never forget the time that I met you for the first time, Miss Sandy. I was in my late 20s. And it was like, man, had I met her when I was in college at 19, 20, like it would have been a totally different path. Yeah. So to to see someone with such a, a, a fire and a drive, you know, it's like this is the thing that, you know, as an educator, I'm trying to instill in 11 and 12 year olds like, hey, baby, is more to this, you know. And so if we can continue to, I think, seek and and as you always say, Miss Andy, bridge the generations, if we can seek to continue to do that, to show them or even you know show them like hey this light is in me it's also in you i can see it so let me just kind of lead you along the right path right. um and i think that's what we lack because we don't want to walk boldly sometimes but we need more people to have uh you know we need more miss sandys we need more jays to say you know what forget all of this i'm gonna say what i gotta say whether you like it or not i still love you in the name of jesus that's it let's eat all right let's eat yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the part about saying it is, and the don't care is not I don't care about you. Right. Yeah. 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 I don't care how you perceive right. me. Right. Right. Yeah. That's the don't care. Yeah. yeah. See, I care enough to open my mouth. Right. To speak to you, to say what God says. Yeah. Yes. What I don't care about is whatever energy comes back to me yeah. right. about being that. Right. And so I guess I wanted to clarify that because yeah. the care is the reason why we out there. Why we're doing it, right. For the world to take it. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's because we do care. Right. So if you care, you know, I would sit in my seal house. Jay would sit in her seal house. You wouldn't be doing Mr. Mac, Mr. and Mrs. Mayor. Right. We just take just, care of ourselves when we're right, about it. Right. But because we do have a care, yeah. because we have the heart of God uh, and the heart after God. We we put ourselves like I know I'm a target. I know it. Oh man, I say the same <laughs> I, thing. I you, you a target, Mr. and Mrs. Madeover. Bullseye. Yeah, there, yeah. There's a bullseye on your back mm -hmm. because the moment you stand up and say I'm going to be counted as a soldier in the fight, you become target. You, right. you become enemy, yeah. enemy, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I think I think that that that's the one thing I wanted to clarify is that we do care. We yeah. care about we can, yeah. what we're doing and who we're doing it for, mm -hmm. and mainly because the overwhelming love that I feel the Lord gives to me, I can't hold it. Yeah, mm -hmm. man. I can't sit by and watch people' lives destroyed and and not give them the tools or the answer to what could be the the most that what is the most important gift mm -hmm. yeah eternal life yeah yeah so right. jay and, i mean you with the young people a lot mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> 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 what would you say is missing in y'all's culture i mean besides a uh, miss sandy but what would you say is missing <laughs> like i mean because i mean your age bracket, you know exactly what I mean for the most part. I know you're around it daily, mm -hmm. day in and day out. So from my, um, what I think is missing, I think understanding. 
and um that's really it understanding because for me when i was young when i was younger um and growing up in church nobody ever really sat us down and explained to us why we believe and what we believe or like why we're christians or anything like that and so i feel like that's why a lot of young people they don't want to go to church they think it's just something like they just think it's tradition and we just go and it's boring like and they they don't teach them like they don't show them like the love of god like the like his presence like they don't they don't explain that to us they don't show that to us so i feel like in my generation i feel like it's understanding they don't really they don't know what they're missing basically and i didn't know what i was missing nobody ever i i didn't have any good examples of what a real relationship with god looked like and i just didn't know had i seen something that made me want that i would have been like i want to see what that's about you know mm-hmm. but i never seen that like and that was a big thing for me like understanding nobody really sat me down was like yeah this is why we believe in god and this like nobody explained that to me i had to kind of do that on my own and god had to lead me in that and and so yeah i feel like that's that's what it is and another thing is like the way that christians are portrayed mm-hmm. it, we're portrayed in a way where it's all about rules and we don't have fun and i know there's a lot of young people like me who um they're creatives and they you know they have they make videos and they show that being a christian is fun you know to love god like to serve god is fun and that's another thing i think is 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 freedom and having fun and also understanding i feel like that's what's missing Mm -hmm. that's what that's what is not showed like that's what's not portrayed to young people so yeah i agree and I can re- I can relate to that because that's how it was growing up for me. It was we got to go again. We just knew we were just going, and all I can remember is at a young age we used to write on the back of the program and pass notes, and we got in trouble all the time. Like that's what it was about for us every single Sunday. Um, and so it was. I grew up going to church, but there was still no positive role model. And then it was nothing to apply to, you know, my life. And then I met Miss Sandy and then it was a whole different ball game going to their church because then it clicked because now I have applications that I can actually apply to my life and it's kind of walking me through this thing instead of just saying, okay, here goes some scriptures. I'm going to, you know, not you know no offense to the hooping and hollering people but you know that was what it was i mean it was just it was cut and dry i mean you really didn't talk to the pastor you just did what you did and you left and so that was how i kind of grew up so for me you know looking at where i am now 36 it was kind of like man if i had it at 19 or if i had it at 20 maybe then i would understand that importance and want to walk in it at a younger age um and and not be you know because then we will have the clarity of it but we do even in my age group you know i still feel that they just don't understand the concept but then we're old enough to go out and seek it too So that's the other side. It's like you can't always just say, you know, you know, somebody's going to feed and give you these things. You got to be willing to go out and search for it as well. Mm -hmm. So that's the one thing that I can definitely say about, you know, our age group is we we were saying, oh, well, we don't understand. We don't get it. But then why aren't you going in? Why aren't you looking for it either? Yeah. Well, for my age group. You and every generation, even our generation, Mm -hmm. we we bought in church. Right, um, you know, it, it, it. I keep trying to tell y'all, this is nothing you understand. Right, <laughs> yeah. Nothing. Right, Jay, your children and your grandchildren will say what you're saying. Yeah. It's boring. Unfortunately, yeah. every generation is going to feel like uh, if somebody just would give it to me in this way. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> you know, Mahalia Jackson. <laughs> Mahalia Jackson was considered a rebel in the church because of her style of music. Mm-hmm. Come along, and then you have the next generation, which are who is it? The um, oh, what's his name? I can't think of his name. Uh, um, oh God, I can't think of his name. That's how old they. <laughs> anyway, every generation has uh, they, they feel like this is the tool. Yeah. That's going to win. Mm-hmm. But it's just it goes back to what I said earlier. Every generation has to catch the torch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's your time now 
walk with the torch and in in the in the dark in the shadow of death hmm. you know right. God is, but you have to carry the torch and you had to receive it from the ones behind you the ones before you rather the ones who 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 who, who, who gave you and and that is what i believe is uh, is a necessary is mentorship Man, mm-hmm. that's good. Mentorship is needed so that, just like the Bible says, and every time we see something in the Word of God, always know this. Whenever we see God give us instructions, something, it's because He knows we're either going to veer from that mm-hmm. or mm, it's not going to be our go to. Mm. But the, he, he teaches us in the Word of God to the older people to, to train the younger people. Mm-hmm. Uh, he t- he teaches parents to uh, to train up your children. It's important that the, the those who have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to pass on to the younger generation something. What we have now is generation break, which is why generation wow. uh, That's uh, true. to me is important. That it's it's a bridge for us because. The young are nothing without the old, and the right. old are nothing without the young. Without the young, the older people, this is the end for us. We have nothing. This is the, this is the end of our existence. And the young without us being able to cross over the bridge, you have no history. Mm-hmm. You have no knowledge, no wisdom, no understanding. You're simply bouncing off of each other at the same place, at the same level, and yeah. not, not getting like nothing. Yeah. Wow. You, so every generation, need we need each other. The the young people now, that's why I said the millennial that, that, that are coming along now, I hope they catch this, that although God is using you, he's not dismissing us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You... <laughs> You know, it's like well, that's what God used to do back then. Yeah, because that's what. What? What? Are you, what are, <laughs> your grandkids don't say the same thing to you. <laughs> that's old fashioned. This is not what we do now. We do. It doesn't change things. the message. The right. message is it's still the same. Yeah. 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 It, this, we still Jesus Christ. Without Him, you have no eternity. Mm. God. So the message doesn't change. You might get different uh, 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 administrations of the message, but mm-hmm. the message is the same. Mm-hmm. And the, and the millennials, I want you all to to recognize the importance of that bridge between us, the old and the young. I I tell young people all the time, I got stuff for you. Now whether you want to believe it or not, because I know you know we we hear from God. I hear God. You know God speaks to me. I know, I know he do. <laughs> in the same time, right? At the same time that he speaks to you, he speaks to me about you. Mm. And there's some things, you know. Sometimes we hear for other people, we don't hear for ourselves. Wow! <laughs> and yeah, that's yeah. Where sometimes that bridge right. is needed mm-hmm. because we can hear for other people, but sometimes when it comes to us, we want to we want to rewrite the script when God talking. We mm-hmm. want right the way he said. <laughs> right. We want to the script and then we need someone of uh, maturity, someone that God is speaking to to come and speak. And so that bridge is a necessity yeah. that we'll be able to cross back and forth. Jay needs me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, she needs me. And guess what? I need her. Right. She's yeah. going to be able to go places that I'm going to need her to be right. the one with the torch because I'm going to be standing right behind her with my hand in her back mm-hmm. pushing her forward yeah. because they're not going to receive me. But right. what I'm going to impart to her or give to her in any way that God will see fit she's going to be the one to deliver. But guess what? Our mission is the same. Right. <laughs> and change. Right, right, right. Yes. <clears throat> you know, that's the, you know, I hope that we catch that fire. Catch that, um, that thought that God is uh, downloading in, on, on the believers. It, it, this divided that we have amongst ourselves and, and, and throughout the nation and all it's, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's the enemy divide and conquer the millennials the baby boomers the baby boomers we need y'all we don't have all the answers and neither do you all we know in part Bible yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah we know in part so how do so, we how do we get together and take people like Janija myself uh, Tiff 
in you and begin to build that bridge even the more because like you said I, th- I think a lot of times like I always feel like I need you like I always feel like I need- <laughs> like if I ever needed somebody it is now to see things that I don't see because uh, and as much as you know I may have a great relationship with God but I haven't been here that long so it's a it's a lot of st- stuff I need to know and grow into. Uh, number one, as a man, a righteous man, but also as a person trying to lead a family. So, what can be done? And I want Janizi to speak from the essence of uh, what do she feel like in her, you know, generation of what they need as far as from people like myself, Miss Sandy, and. Mrs. Mo. Are you asking me first? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, what's coming to my mind is when she said mentorship, that was really good. I feel like that's something that we definitely need. Um, I think, I think gentle, gentle, I don't know if it's going to make sense, but like in my head, I'm just thinking like gentle guidance, like we need guidance. Um, my generation is kind of prideful, so we feel as though we don't need anybody older to, you know, accomplish anything. Um, so I feel like maybe if, you know, you guys, your age group can come, you know, help us, but in a gentle way and not in a way where it's like, we know more of you, even though you do, but it's just like in a way where like, we won't, we won't feel as though we're ignorant, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Gotcha. Um, but definitely mentorship. I think that's really good. But yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and, and uh, Mrs. Mo, what do you feel like you need in your age bracket <laughs> in order to help you keep going and growing in this thing? Um, I think at this point, not only um, if we have not sought mentorship, that would be good. But the ones that are already um on this walk the the with the continued wisdom and the continued guidance um because you know i i know personally i'm at a brook that i'm constantly getting fed so now i understand the importance of let me share it with this group of people who may not necessarily receive it but i know that it is good fruit that is being poured into me and so let me allow it to overflow so to speak into others so the continued wisdom and the continued guidance um along with that that mentorship that jay mentioned and just that you know that unction to just keep going because sometimes when we stumble i know i can recall falling and you know not wanting to keep going or being under heavy attack um and not knowing which way to turn and i'll never forget miss sandy this was the the one it was a one night and uh i think mr mo took the picture but it was a night you came over here and you were just speaking to me and we i think we didn't even know he was taking the picture until after the fact and that was a night where it made sense because then i knew i had someone that i can lean on but somebody that was also imparting in me and so with that it's just making sure that we understand because i mean i'll be honest my family is not solid in the faith (laughs) um so it's it's that much more of a struggle so it's i'm having to look out to people that are strong in the faith to continue to get that nurturing and guidance well for me um i think um it goes back to i love truth yeah something about that truth um when i came when i first came to, to columbus and found out the truth I look back hindsight like wow y'all made life horrible like (laughs) (laughs) like, y'all focus on something else (laughs) 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 your focus is off but when I found out the true essence of Mm -hmm. who God is and and, and like like when you discover who he is his character his 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 
his ultimate love for you like i mean the true father like mm-hmm. listen i don't care what it looked like i got you Mm-hmm. No matter what, that's why that's why I'm so strong in this thing, and <laughs> but and, and that's my thing. Like we miss the true right character in the essence of who God is. A lot of times we read the Bible, but we don't go back and see who the essence and who Jesus and who and, and what He was really about. Mm-hmm. Like the love that He showed. Like, right. you got to understand when he told the woman at the well to where are your accusers? You that's like, like he could have, I mean, he could have cast the first stone if he wanted to. <laughs> right. But he showed mercy. Well, right. That's called an adultery. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah. but he showed mercy yeah. and still yeah. said, yeah. go and yeah. sin no more. Right. If that's not love from a person who is unblemished to a person who took on stripes and, and I feel like I'm preaching now. Yeah. But, <laughs> but but once you get that true essence, mm-hmm. the truth of who God is and to me, that's what needs to be passed on. Like, listen, mm-hmm. God is not this carbon copy that you think people that like, don't go off mm-hmm. what man say. Go off what truth say. Right. Because truth say I'm going to love you in, in, in spite of what you're doing, I'm still gonna be yeah. here. Right. Yeah. So that's my thing to to pass on, and, and I think that's what uh, Miss Sandy gave to us. Like it's truth. Yeah. Like like listen, this is who God is. Yeah. <laughs> that's him. <laughs> and it's not it's not how society or the the fads paint where it's you know oh you can get a car you can get this you can get that you can because that a lot of times unfortunately is what you know jay's group gets my groups get and that's kind of what we sit solid on but we don't go back and look for ourselves or find someone with the wisdom that says you know what yeah this is no nah, that's all wrong but miss sandy that's what i mean that's what you have taught us yeah. and then that's what you're continuing to teach for people that are even you know seasoned like yourself you're constantly saying this is not god right here what you hear oh, i'm see i'm throwing by the Throw my mic. Um, <laughs> um, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> but that's what we're missing because if we don't have, and that's that's where that wisdom comes in. Yeah. Like the wisdom behind the fact that Miss Sandy, you have the truth. You know it. You've seen it. You, you what you say? You got t-shirts and trophies <laughs> and all of that. You got a whole curio cabinet full, right? And so, <laughs> so that's what we're missing because it, it's all linked and we're all saying the same thing just in a different way. But it's still that same stuff. What Miss Sandy saw. What your age group saw, what my age group saw, what Jay's age group saw. So it's now it's people are we're saying what you need to do, but now you need to take heed and now you need to grasp it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you yeah. can't just say, oh, well, I'm going to sit and I'm just going to chill and then I'm going to wait till he come. You can't do that. Now you got to go out and you have to do the work. Faith without right. work. Right. <laughs> but that is so that's so good, though. I feel like that actually is something I don't even think about. But truth. That's a big one. I feel like um, like people in my age group, we see, like I said, they see, they, they view Christianity in a certain way because it's not portrayed what, right. Like the mm-hmm. actual truth of who God is and who yeah. Jesus was. It's not portrayed right, right. And they have like a wrong understanding. And based mm-hmm. off that understanding they have, they're like, I don't want any of that. Right. That's, like, I don't want that. But it's like, no, that's not what he's like. People are portraying it wrong. Mm-hmm. And they're not telling you to hold truth. Because I know that's how I grew up. I, I feel like I grew up with half the truth. If I really, truly knew and like could grasp who God what who Jesus was at a young age. Yeah. I would have been I would have been, you know, say I would have been born again a long time ago. Like I would have been giving my life away completely. Yeah. But I didn't have the right understanding of mm-hmm. who he was. And I feel like that's definitely something that's definitely missing is truth. Like wisdom and truth. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. good. that's good yeah. stuff. But that's where I think she and I was talking about that, you know, uh you was I I heard your words when you said that with the young people in your age they, that we have to come to them in a gentle way and mm-hmm. uh but i i'm gonna tell you though the the the, the, the name of the show is what the round bold and i don't care bold, bold and what i don't I care, care. <laughs> okay let me just tell you how that looks <laughs> 
is not always gentle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course not. Yeah. Truth. And see, if I say it to your generation, sometimes they don't hear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when the bold and the I don't care, 19, 20, 21, 22 year olds say it, mm -hmm. it matters. Yeah. Right. So that's where the bull comes in. That's where the I don't care. Y'all can call me crazy. You can say whatever you want to say. But let me just <laughs> tell you that, and all we do is introduce people to God. We can't make people. Right. Have right. All yeah. All we are our introduction agents. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. It's that's up good. to each individual the depth of the relationship with God. Mm. Mm. We just introduce. Some people go just scratch the surface and have a very surface relationship. Some go in deep, you know, covered up, <laughs> swallowed up in it. Right. Uh, all we are out here to do is to introduce. And, and, and that's why, you know, I don't like to introduce God as, you know, uh, he ain't a sugar daddy. He's not. Yeah. He will give you, he will give you the things of this earth, mm -hmm. but the, but the, but the the uh, the God of this earth will do that too. Mm -hmm. Facts. And he offered it to Christ. I, you know, if you just bow down, I give you. You know, I give you everything. Yeah. So I, I don't like to introduce God as that. Mm -hmm. He is much, much more. Right. He, nothing. Let me tell you about the peace in your soul, mm -hmm. in your mind. And then that you can lay down in the middle of chaos and feel his presence so strong that yeah. you care not about this natural thing called flesh. Mm -hmm. yeah. As long as you're at peace with God, you know, and, and, and so that's the introduction that I like people to know about. God. I like them to know his essence, yeah. you know, his character. His and most, you know, his love, not just know, it, but let it just like resonate in you and flow through you. And uh, trust me, when the love of God flows through you, right. there, there's no containing that. Yeah. Tell me how you contain the love of God, because I like to know. <laughs> <laughs> Itself. That's what, that's what uh, you know, Jeremiah told me, it's like fire. Shut, Shut up, up in my bones. <laughs> yeah. What we do with fire shut up in us? You get the room. <laughs> you know, ain't nobody sitting there with no fire. Right. <laughs> you have to do something. Right. So I think that you know, uh, Jay, I I I I I I hear you loud and clear mm -hmm. in the gentleness of your generation. Unfortunately, you're being raised up. Rebel, yeah, <laughs> and it will probably not be gentle. Uh, it is going to go against the grain mm -hmm. uh, because pride cannot manifest anything positive. Right. It, it, unfortunately, pride is only one thing you can do with pride, and that's break it. Mm -hmm. Got to break it. And when it's broken, you know, it, 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 folk don't like that too much. Yeah. Okay. So I just didn't want you to walk into uh, a, a trap down the road when you, when, when when it's not gentle. <laughs> 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 when you come in like a battering ram, <laughs> God says, "Break up the foul ground." Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pride that I have a nation of people who will not hear the voice. Mm -hmm. Of the elders, mm. I never tell my mama how to talk to me. I never tell my daddy how to talk to me. <laughs> As a matter of fact, whenever way they come, <laughs> <laughs> and whenever the father speak to us, we don't get to say, "Well, that's a little too hard, God." Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. His essence, who he is, mm -hmm. does not change from generation to generation. And unfortunately, pride is a thing that has to be broken. And if that is what the, our generation has taken on, is that we don't want people really telling us something that we're doing wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, that is pride. And it's going to have to be broken. And, and I believe Jay, Tip, Mo, yeah, there you go. That's your job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Break it up. Yeah. Break the foul ground, and and for life's sake, I always say uh, that 
it's better to offend mm -hmm. and save a soul mm -hmm. than to uh, what we call uh, hold our tongue mm. and uh, life is lost. And that's what that says. It's better to uh, 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 open rebuke is better than secret love. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And that's where open rebuke is just harsh. Yeah. yeah. It's harsh, but it's for the soul's sake. Uh, it's going to take your generation to tell your generation we need to shut up sometimes and sit down mm. and listen. Yeah. yeah, I say that it's harsh and it's unreceived. If you say that, it's noticed. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I was tripping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I was and tripping. And show them in scripture. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, when you go work for work, can't really. You know, but who can fight against the word of the Lord? No one. No one can. And you show in the scriptures where the word of God teaches that we are supposed to receive from our elders. Mm -hmm. We're yeah. supposed to hear their voices. We're supposed to allow them to cross our bridges and come and bring us what we have need of to train and develop them and prepare us for this fight that we have coming. Man. And, um, yeah. Because the way that they're set up now um, without the ability to receive wisdom from the elders, uh, they will have to learn lessons hard that they didn't have to learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Man. That's good stuff. Yeah, it is. And um <laughs> I'm 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 hoping that I well not hope, but we will continue to uh connect with each other. I don't want this to be one of those things that, you know, oh, this sounds like real good. Now let's go our own separate ways now. Yeah. I'm not even about that life. I'm about <laughs> relationships. <Yeah>. But <laughs> in building relationships, right. I think, as Miss Sandy said earlier, we need each other. And in mm -hmm. this walk, like the the season need <laughs> the young. The young. Oh, Jay. Man, the old people need <laughs> but we need each other and that's the only way this yeah. life is successful i am where i am because mm -hmm. i took on and was able to be poured into mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if i was not able to be poured into i'll still be in lola bar right about now right. place of no hope no no nothing yeah so i i give true honor to god number one where I'm at, um, this platform, uh, Janiza, do you want to say anything to your people before you go out and start wrecking house? <laughs> <laughs> um, you said, do I want to say something to my, you said my people? Yeah. Like your generation, like to encourage them and, um, what well, to encourage them? Um, I would say just keep seeking God. Um, a lot of times we, you know, we want God, we want things from God, but we don't take that extra step to actually seek him. We don't, we're not diligent in seeking his face. Mm. And those who aren't diligent in seeking him, who, who don't actually want him and hunger for him, they're not going to get him. You have to seek him with your mm. whole heart. You have to seek him. If you, if you say you, you sought God and you prayed and you, and nothing happened, you, what, you weren't doing it with your whole heart. You have to you have to do it with your whole heart. Be sincere and actually want him. Hunger and thirst for him, you know? Oh, right. Um, yeah, so that's that's my encouragement, just to truly seek God and you will find him. Because honestly, a lot of us young young people, they, they have a longing for God. Like they long for him and they don't even know what they're longing for, but it's God. Hmm. And they're, they're afraid to turn to him for whatever reason because of the, what their friends think, what their family think, mm. or mm. whatever. But it's like, if you truly want him, he's here. He's waiting for you. Like yeah. he's waiting for you. Um, so yeah, that's my that's my encouragement. Mrs. Bo, anything you want to say to your people? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up and listen. <laughs> no. Wow. Uh. Um, I, but I mean that is so true. Because what what we I'm gonna be honest, Mom. I used to think I knew it all until you said, "No." Nah. I mean, I'm sorry, Miss Sandy. Sandy. See, man, <laughs> <laughs> it's all the same, Miss <laughs> Sandy. Miss <laughs> Sandy. <laughs> you know, it was 
Remember when you said who, who did the message where you had the was that you? Yeah, uh huh. See, uh huh. But that's how it is. Like we just have to slay our flesh. We have to be. We have to own up to ourselves that we don't know it all. That everything we have tried, it has not worked. It will not work. And we have to seek out God, as Jay said. We have to seek out God, but it may mean getting the wisdom from somebody who is already there. Yeah. And so, in order to do that, we literally have to shut up and listen and be willing to receive what is being imparted into us. Yeah. Well, how do, how do you come after <laughs> shut up and listen? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I think for me, um, the song that comes to my, to, to my heart and, and it always resonates with me is, uh, uh, to you, which is, you know, you know, coming back to Jesus, <laughs> always running after him. Regardless yes. of like, like never, never get to a point where you feel like you understand who God is. Like, don't let him get dull in your life. Like, continue to pursue. Like, every day I wake up, it's a new love because it's like falling in love over and over and over again. For me, that's for me. Like, keep keep running after him. We, we do not waver in this thing. I know life is going to happen. That's part of life. But keep your eyes to him and, and understand that no matter what it looks mm-hmm. like, I think we sung a song uh, 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 Sunday. He never fails. Mm-hmm. Name a time that he has failed. You can. Can't. You'll be a liar. <laughs> 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 like nobody yeah. can say I got a father that's undefeated in this world. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. And for me, it's like continue to run after that. Continue mm-hmm. to like never think that you got it. Never think that oh this is just God. This is just Jesus or this is just church. No, pursue it like mm-hmm. love. Yeah. Yeah. Never yeah. fall out of love. Never fall out of love. And that's, that's my thing. Right mhm. Ooh, ooh. And Mr. Sandy, do you got <laughs> to say to your season? <laughs> but to, I guess, to my generation, don't get weary in well doing. Hmm. Because we, some of us, have been, we've been fighting a long time. Hmm. And we've fallen, we've gotten up, uh, we've seen a lot happening. Um, we see a lot coming, but don't get weary in the well doing. We got to continue to fight the good fight. And so I'm encouraged when I see this right here. <laughs> see, I already know. God. See, God got a plan. Oh yeah. I I don't know every part of it, but I see pieces of it right here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This lets me know this is not the end. That God has a plan, and and like you said, that song we say, when has He failed? <laughs> he has never failed, never. and because He has never failed, I know that He's raising up not this generation, every generation from the beginning. He has had a people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, He has had a people, and He He will always have a people. There will always be some who will answer for the call. And uh, and so you all just make your election known, uh, steadfast, unmovable. If you fall, get back up and know that he is a God of forgiveness. Yeah. And that he is there waiting for you. And that uh, whatever strength you have need of, call upon his name mm-hmm. in your lowest moment. Never feel like you're in this thing alone. There's no such thing as a long range in the house of God. We're yeah. one body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In need of one another. If you need your head scratch, guess what? You might need my finger. That's what I am. <laughs> so you, you just be a, you just be miserable till I do it. With that being said, I just I'm thankful. Thank you for having me on the Mr. Mrs. Mado. Thank yeah. you for having me. I appreciate it. Well, and like we always say around about this time, keep God first. And And the rest rest will will be be added. added. Thank you for tuning in.